Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today in this video I'm going to check the new HD FPV camera from Cadex, the Cadex Turtle. In this video I'm going to go over its features and head the doors and test it out. In addition, in the next few days I'm also going to post some other videos where I'm going to compare it side by side with the Runcam Split Mini. The Turtle is available in two colors, so you can either get it in black, which is already mounted here and ready for a side by side comparison with the Split Mini and my GoPro Session 5, and you can also get it in red, which is the one I'm going to show you in this video. Inside the box, we get in the Turtle's camera, a mounting bracket, a control board, and a bag with some screws, a hex driver, wires, and also these two plates, which are going to help you to mount the Turtle. Just like the Runcom Split Mini, the Cadex Turtle records videos on 1080p 60 frames per second. In addition, instead of using two plates like the Runcom Split Mini, it uses a single plate, which is a little bigger than the ones that the Runcom Split Mini is using. In terms of dimensions, the Turtle weighs 13.7 grams, so it's a little bit lighter than the Split Mini, which weighs 15.3 grams. As for the camera unit itself, the back dimensions are identical to the Split Mini and has the standard size of 19 by 19 millimeters. However, the Cadex Turtles is a little bit shorter than the Split Mini and the distance between the back part to the front part is about 20 millimeters, whereas it's about 22.6 on the Runcom Split Mini. As for the dimensions of the Cadex Turtle board, they are about 28.8 by 28.3 by 8 millimeters. So even though that the Turtles is using a single board, since it uses this connector, you can see that the total height of the Split Mini is about 8.7 millimeters, whereas it's 8 millimeters on the Turtle, so it's not significantly slimmer than the Split Mini. Now, unlike the Split Mini, which has two buttons, one to start and stop the recording and another one to configure the camera, the Cadex Turtle has only a single button, which is used to start and stop the recording. In order to configure the camera, you're going to need to use this provided OSD board, and I'm going to show you how it's done later in this video. The onboard micro SD slot supports micro SD cards between 8 to 64 gigabytes, and in addition, you're going to need at least class 10 cards. As you might have noticed, the Cadex Turtle has a little bit strange mounting layout. So you can see the distance between these two holes is the standard 20 millimeters. However, this hole is located a little bit awkwardly, so it's not going to enable you to mount it directly on top of a 20 by 20 stack. You can see it's just not going to fit, whereas the Runcom Split Mini fits perfectly because the distance between all the four holes is the standard 20 millimeters. So you have a couple of mounting options. First of all, you can just use three holes in order to mount it. So you can just trim the four screw, which is what I'm going to do. And if you mount it on a 30.5 by 30.5 board, you're not going to have any problem because you're going to need to use the provided adapters anyway. Another difference between the Split Mini and the Cadex Turtle is that the Split Mini has an onboard microphone, whereas it's not present on the Cadex Turtles, so it's not going to record any audio. And also the connector of the camera is different. You can see this one is flexible, whereas the connector of the Split Mini is not. And it seems like this connector is better than the one that the Split Mini is using. You can see, however, it is connected in this manner and it is not secured like the Split Mini, which is using this accessory in order to secure it. Finally, the operating voltage of the Cadex Turtle is between 4 to 20 volts, where it is between 5 to 17 volts on the Runcom Split Mini. Starting up the Cadex Turtle is done using this OSD control board. Short pressing the joystick is going to open the menu where we can set the OSD settings. So for example, you can see that now the voltage and time are shown. So now I'm going to turn off the voltage. You can do it by just tilting the joystick to the right or to the left. Now it's set to off. I'm also going to turn off the time. You can also perform a reset, exit, and you can also save and exit the settings. Selecting an option is done by short pressing the joystick. You can also set up the video options. In this version, you can set it between 720p and 1080p. Shortly, I'm going to upgrade it, which is going to add some more options. You can also enable the loop video, which is going to split the recorded file into smaller chunks. You can set auto recording to off and on. I recommend to set it to on, which is going to auto start the recording when you're going to connect the battery. You can set up the wide dynamic, default is on, and I'm going to leave it like that. And now you can save and exit the settings. In the camera settings, you can set the exposure, metering mode between multi, spot, and center. The FOV can be changed between high, narrow, and medium. The screen flip can be changed between on and off. I'm going to set it to on because I think it's going to be easier to mount the camera in this way. The night frequency can be changed between 50 to 60 Hz, and then you can save and exit the settings. 
Under image effect, we can set the saturation, sharpness, contrast, brightness, and you can also reset it to default settings. The TV system can be set between NTSC and PAL. And under system settings, we can set the auto boot. The language can be set between English and Chinese. Under SD card information, we can see no information because right now there is no SD card present. We can format the SD card. And under system information, we can see the current version. This is the version that was shipped with the camera and shortly I'm going to upgrade it. And it can also perform a factory reset. In order to upgrade the firmware of the camera to the latest version, you're going to need to place the new firmware on the root directory of your micro SD card. Then insert the micro SD card to the Cadex Turtle. Turn on the camera. Then you're going to see the Cadex logo. And you can see that now it's updating the firmware. In addition, you're going to see the LED indicator flashing rapidly in blue color. It's going to take about 35 seconds to complete the upgrade. Then the camera is going to turn itself off. Now it was turned off. And one important thing that you're going to need to do is to delete the firmware from the micro SD card. Otherwise, when you're going to turn it on again, it's going to update itself again. So a small note to Codex on the next firmware, make sure to delete the firmware from the micro SD card after a successful update. So now after the upgrade, everything was reset to the default settings. So I'm going to need to adjust the settings on the camera again. So now I'm going to turn off the voltage and the time on the camera and I can save it. In addition, under video, you can see that now we have different options. So we can record video 1080p 60 frames per second. We can change it to 30 frames per second, 720p 120 frames per second, and back again to 1080p 60 frames per second, which is the option that I'm going to use. I'm going to turn on again the auto recording. And by the way, you can see that now we have the TV ratio, so you can set the camera between 4x3 to 16x9, which is a nice option. Under system information, we can see the new firmware. So this is the latest one from the 25th of July. The next thing I was about to do is to mount the Codex Turtles on my Flexo CSNTX and head outdoors and test it out. However, I had a small issue. One of the wires was bent and actually was detached and it is practically impossible to put it in place. So my advice to Codex is to include another cable and I'm going to let them know because these wires are a little bit fragile and if one of them is going to be detached, you're only going to see the yellow Codex logo on your screen and the video is just not going to work because it's a digital signal. I do have another extra camera but I don't want anything bad to happen to it so I'm going to finish first my side by side comparison video so I'm going to compare the HD footage, the FPV footage and I'm going to perform the latency test and in the next couple of days I'm going to release the flight footage after I'm going to finish the side by side comparison videos. As always, I thank you for watching my video. I hope you enjoyed it and you find it useful. If you have any questions about the Cadex Total camera, feel free to ask it in the comment section down below. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you like this video and consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the notification bell if you're not already subscribed. See you in my next videos and goodbye.